If you look at uh, Luke 9, 34, the Bible said, and, there, and while he thus spake, there came a cloud and overshadowed them. Some cross-references for your own study in the book of Exodus chapter 14, the Bible says, And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. Another one is Exodus chapter 40 and verse 34. Then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Exodus 33, 9 says, And it came to pass, as Moses entered into the temple, the cloudy pillar descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle, and the Lord talked with Moses. If you look at Luke 9, 35, the Bible said, And there came a voice out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son, hear him. So we have, we have God the Father, God the Son. He said, this is my beloved Son. And what this is, is a confirmation of the deity of Jesus Christ. The deity of Christ, which we mentioned in Sunday school, is one of the fundamentals of the faith. So also, in Matthew chapter 6, a cross-reference to this portion, Matthew chapter 3, verse 16, I'm sorry, and a, a, low, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I, I, I am well pleased. God then says in, in Luke 9 that we are to hear the Lord. Now I want you to look with me in Acts chapter 3 and verse 22. Hold your place in Luke chapter 9. And let's go to Acts chapter 3 verse 22. So in verse 22, based on this issue of God saying, hear him, verse 22, for Moses truly said unto the fathers, that prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your, your brethren like unto me. Him shall you hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. In Deuteronomy chapter 18, the Bible said, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. Okay, now go with me to the book of Hebrews toward the back of the Bible, just a few pages back. And you'll find the book of Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. I don't want to mention something as a side note here once we read these verses. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 and 2. God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the what? Prophets. Prophets. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his who? Son. Right. So how does, the, how does God speak to us in the last days? By his, son. by his son. Whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Okay. Probably one page back will be Titus chapter 2. Look at Titus chapter 2. So in Hebrews, in he, now listen today, my voice is a little raspy, so I'm not going to be bombastic. i say that, and then here I'll go. I'm not going to try to keep your attention. We're just going to go through this, and, and you're going to have to pay attention on purpose. In Hebrews, it says that God used to speak to us by the prophets, and now he speaks to us through his, by his son, the Word is called, Jesus, the, Jesus Christ is called the Word. The Word is Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to notice what it says in uh, Titus chapter 2, verse 13. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Looking for that blessed hope. Look at me real quick. So what you're going to hear a lot today 
as you listen to, about theology and things that are going on uh, worldwide, everybody's looking for the Antichrist. And these guys that call themselves prophets. I think about one that came out to Fairmont saying that George, uh, Donald Trump was going to be the next president. And then Donald Trump, you know it's a 50-50 chance, right? Um, Donald Trump's going to be, I'm prophesying Donald Trump's going to be the next president. Well, he wasn't. So what does that prophet need to do? Well, he shut up. We don't need your prophecy about current times. We don't even need to be trying to fit. There are many people that fit what might be conceived as the possible antichrist on today's political scene, right? There's many people that fit that bill. We don't know who it is. My job is not to try to figure out who he is, and I don't need a prophet telling me he saw something in a dream that he thought up, that he saw. That Leave those guys alone. No, all I need is the word of God and faith in God's word, and I, I am to be looking for the blessed hope. Let me tell you something. You want to get discouraged? Start looking for the Antichrist. You want, you, you want to get real discouraged? Get away from the book and start looking at what's going on around you in circumstances. Everybody's trying to feed you with information. You are, listen, I'm not, I'm not saying we're to be ignorant about political issues. We need to be very wise and knowledgeable about the word of God. The Bible said they hear him. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 3, verse 15. Hebrews 3, 15. <clears throat> Hebrews 3.15 Is that what I told you? Okay, good. Verse 15 While it is said, today if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. For some when they had heard did provoke, howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. But with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to some swear that, he, uh, that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not? Right. So we see that they could not enter in because of what? That's the same thing to keep a person out of heaven today. It is their unbelief. The Bible said we are to hear the Lord Jesus. John chapter 5, look over with me, John chapter 5 and verse 46. John chapter 5, verse 46 and 47. The works of God testified of Jesus Christ. God the Father testified of Jesus Christ. The writings of Moses testified of Jesus Christ. And the Bible said, in your witnesses. There's four witnesses. God the Father, the works, they, they proved that Jesus Christ is who he said he was. And the writing of Moses. Look at me in verse 46. For had you believed Moses, you would have believed me. For he did what? What did he do? He wrote of me. But if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? You see, the Bible says in Luke chapter 9, verse 36, And when the voice was passed, Jesus was found alone, and they kept it close and told no man in those days any of those things which they had seen. Now, that would be hard to keep your mouth shut, right? You just saw, saw Moses and Elijah, and you saw the Lord Jesus Christ transfigured on the Mount of Transfiguration, it'd be hard to keep it quiet. Verse 37, And it came to pass that on the next day when they were come down from the hill, much people, much people met him. So they go, listen, they go from solitude to a, of a time of prayer, and then what, what did the disciples do? They fell asleep. They fall asleep. They miss some of what's going on. They were able to they were able to see this, this amazing event that uh, occurred. Then they're able to hear the voice of God out of the cloud. But, you know, this is not something that's not unique because it happened in Exodus. And then you, you look at that, that the Lord's talking to them. So they see this 
heavenly visit with Moses and Elijah. And they, listen, they speak to him of his coming death. So Moses and Elijah are talking to the Lord about his coming death. But then they come down from the hill and one man with one child cries out for the Lord to look upon his son. Verse 38, please. Luke 9, 38. And behold, a man of the company cried out saying, Master, I beseech thee, look upon my son, for he is my only child. So here Jesus is, he's the only begotten of the father, looking at a man with only one child, and it's a boy. Look at verse 39. And lo, a spirit taketh him, and he suddenly crieth out, and it teareth him that he foameth again, and bruising him, hardly departeth from him. And I besought thy disciples to cast him out, and they could not. See, I want to share something with you. Hollywood has been very pervasive in our country for quite some time. Back in the 1700s, you had the, you had the print, 17, 18, 1900s. I think one of the worst things that has happened to us in the technological age is losing newspapers. Now, they've not always been conservative, of course, and some are extreme left, but sometimes it's good to read something from the left just to know where those suckers are standing. Right? So we've lost the, we've lost the aspect of the power of the word in print. I think that that, as Christian-wise, has translated back over to the Bible that we've We've disregarded the authority of God's word. We're not listening to God. And then we come to this story about demonic possession, and we look at it like it's a trifling matter. You see, Hollywood has so downplayed and performed predictive program on you so well that we are now impartial to people's spiritual conditions. Or it's not that I'm impartial. I could just care less. Some of the battles that they faced, these disciples could not help. But the remedy was with the Redeemer, not with the disciples. Let me say something about us being so, I would say, so calloused, so non-caring, so cynical. You know something about the Okay, well, your computer or the television, because many of you just said, I'm cutting cable off, I don't need it. It is always available. No matter where it is, no matter where you are, it's always available. And so you know I can just look at something on my phone, I can just crank the TV up, I can just sit there for hours and just mosey on right along and waste day after day, hour after hour, right? Have you ever been there? That you just sit and all of a sudden you realize, well, two hours just went by. What did I do with that? But the problem is, is that we've lost the aspect and really the reality that there is a real devil and demon possession is still a real problem. I think it was uh, Mark Twain that said, we have educated ourselves into imbecility. And in some regards, I think we've medicated ourselves into imbecility. You say, wait a minute, you're talking about pharmaceuticals? No, I'm talking about we've medicated ourselves with technology to the point we don't care. So all of a sudden, you're going to take a presidential candidate that is a zero and now make her a hero? Who got shot? I don't know. Who got shot? Did anybody get shot? No, I think it was shrapnel. You see where that argument goes? That we have watched so much garbage of shootings and stabbings. It's like... Okay, it, was it just Natchez, Mississippi that had this, or, or was this actually, did this happen in Mannington, or wherever you were raised? That there was a homicide, and because there was a homicide, everybody's like, 
Oh my goodness, someone got murdered this week. Uh huh, huh, uh, hello, hello. Am I up here by myself? But now it's like somebody just got shot two doors down. Big deal. Come on. Right? No, okay. There's such grievous crime going on in this state, let alone other, sta- other states beside us. I mean, Maryland. Good, great. Look at Philadelphia. We think I don't go there. It doesn't matter to me. Do you, do you not believe that there are demonic problems in an area like ours? Have you not seen some of these people that are in desperation and desperate situations that need the Lord? Well, pray tell me, what in the world are we doing? Uh, by the way, when he came down off the hill, a bunch of people met him, and this one guy says, hey, my only son's been taken over by a, a spirit. Now, notice before you take a nap. Jesus Christ replies in verse nine, chapter 9, verse 41 through 43, And Jesus answering said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you and suffer you? Bring thy son hither. And as he was yet a coming, the devil threw him down and tear him. And Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the child and delivered him again to his father. And they were all amazed at the mighty power of God. But while they wondered, everyone at all things which Jesus did, he said unto his disciples. Now, let me give you this. When, when you look at back at verse 30, 30, uh, 41, Jesus tells them, you are faithless. You know what that word definition, faithless, means? Not true to allegiance or duty. Not true to allegiance or duty. Okay, so then the question has to be to myself, am I true to my allegiance to God? Hello? Right. Am I true to my duty to God? What is your duty to God? What do, what do you read from God's word that is your duty? Hmm. Faithless also means it's untrustworthy. Untrustworthy. I've, I've had business owners, look at me. I've had business owners tell me, I, I don't hire Christians anymore, you can't trust them. Do you know the book of Titus tells you that you, you are to do your job as a servant and to please your master in all things? You, you're, you are a living example of the grace of God the harder you work. Right. Notice what Jesus said in verse... 41, oh, faithless, and what's the next word? And what? Perverse Perverse generation. Perverse. Well, what in the world's perversity? It means turned away from what is right or good, what is corrupt, what is improper, what is incorrect, contrary to the evidence or the direction of of a judge on a point of law. Are you confused about the points of law that God said you need to be holy as I'm holy? Are we confused on what God tells us that we need to behave ourselves in certain ways so that we can be a proper witness? Are we confused or we just ignore it? I'm going to tell you what what it is. We've been so desensitized that we're not even sensitive to the Word of God. Yeah. So in other words, what what, what, what would we be? Okay, so think about this. If God gives you the gospel and he tells you, I want you to proclaim the gospel and you don't, you don't ever do it, are you unfaithful? Yeah? Okay. So then God tells you, oh, I want you to serve God. And if you do that and you do all that you're commanded, say that we are unprofitable servants for we have done that which is our what? Duty to do. All right. So then I could say, yep, I'm, I'm, I'm faithless uh, many times. Uh, could I say that I'm perverse? Well, think about this and think about your life, and I'll think about mine. Turn away from what is right or good or corrupt. Uh, tur- uh, turning away from what is improper or what is, what is correct, and I'm turned away from it. Something that is contrary to the evidence of the direction of the judge on a point of law. Here's another one. Obstinate, obstinate. In opposing what is right, reasonable, or accepted, are wrong-headed. Here's another one. Arising from uh, 
uh, or indicative of stubbornness. I'm stubborn. I'm not going to do this. I refuse to do this. Yet the Bible tells you clearly to do it. So could I call myself in many regards perverse? Yeah. Yeah, I could. Jesus said, suffer you. That means to put up with you. To put up with you. Thank God for the mercy and the suffering of the Lord Jesus Christ with my rebellion. And not only my rebellion, my stubbornness. I'm just stubborn. I'm not going here. I'm not doing that. I'm not speaking to that person. I'm not going to ask for forgiveness for them. I'm not going to behave in a godly way. I'm just going to do what people want. Listen, what people want is they, they do not want repentance. And I'm stopping. They do not want repentance. They want relief from circumstances. I'm going to say it again. They do not want repentance. They want relief from circumstances. You get in a mess, you get where you are, you're doing what you're doing. You don't want to repent. What you want is relief from the circumstances. And Jesus Christ said, how long will I suffer you? Do you know the Bible teaches that we are to walk in the fear of the Lord? And so if I'm to walk in the fear of the Lord, I need to be conscious that there is a result for living in sin. And sometimes you have to still deal with the consequences, though I'm forgiven. You say, well, prove it. Okay, David. David asked for forgiveness, but he still had to deal with the consequences of his wickedness. Yeah? Dead baby, dead children, a daughter that had been raped and ravaged, children killing each other. What kind of total mayhem? All because he chose, I'm going to do what I want to do. Friend, what I'm trying to tell you is this. We're in a very dark spiritual age, though we have a lot of light. It seems like we have a lot of light. Well, we do. We have the word of God. But you and I need to make up our mind. You know, you know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to be faithless, and I'm not going to be perverse, and I'm going to serve God. So he didn't look at me and say, how long shall I suffer you? In other words, how long am I going to put up with you? I don't know how in the world God's put up with the United States the way he has. I'm not anti-American, by the way. I hope you understand that. I am 100% red-blooded American, and I'm not ashamed of it. I thank God for it. And I thank God, I thank God that we are born in America, and we have the freedom to have the word of God. We have the freedom to do what? We have the freedom to speak our peace in, in religion, and we, allegedly, and we have the freedom to, to, to own guns for the right purpose, and it's not duck hunting. We have a right to be free from search and seizure. I, I'm proud about all those things. But what I'm shocked as as a preacher is the perversity and the faithlessness of people that claim to be saved. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Anyone in this room says, Pastor Bowman, I don't know for sure if I died, I'd go to heaven. I need to get that settled.